afternoon. Michael and I are in the car and we are headed out to the farm. My stepdad just got home from the hospital here a little bit ago. So we are headed up to kind of get them settled in. And my main job today is to take my mom and my sister to the grocery store and pick out some things that they are going to need because, um, you know, he obviously his diet is completely changing now. Um, if you hadn't seen my last video that was out on Sunday, then I'll just catch you up to speed really quick. My stepdad had a heart attack uh, this past week. So exactly a week ago today, it was on Wednesday. Um, it was actually a Widowmaker heart attack. So only about 12% of people survive that one. It is a blockage in the main artery that runs to your heart. And so 50% of the blood supply to your heart comes from that artery. So it is pretty urgent and pretty uncommon for people to survive it, but he did. And so he is very for fortunate and blessed and lucky to be with us. But now that means dietary and lifestyle changes are a must. And since I am a certified holistic nutritionist, they have enlisted my help with getting him started. So that is what this video is going to be focused on. Um, we're going to do some grocery shopping for heart healthy items. And I have a meal plan with me and probably going to cook a couple of things and kind of give some tutorials for my mom. Um, I imagine I'll be going up about once a week here for the foreseeable future until they really get the hang of things. Um, but that is what you can expect to see in this video. So when I get there, I will grab my mom and sister and we'll be headed off to the store and I will catch up with you then and try to um, record as much as I can while we're there. So see you soon. So that I just grabbed, I basically went to TJ Maxx earlier and I was looking for dried like, fruit stuff that didn't have any added sugar and they had some things so I just grabbed them. So I got mangoes, figs, and dates. So, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then I picked you up two loaves of sourdough from um, Green's Garden so you can put one in the fridge and one in the freezer. I did pick up some beet juice because I checked the Walmart in Perryville and they didn't have any. The only place that did was the one in uh, the Super Center in Cape. Um, but this, so this is just a lot like spinach. So it's got a really high oxalate level. So you don't want to do this too often. I would do a couple times a week because that's the stuff that can like lead to kidney stones. I don't know if he'll have problems with that or not, but we just don't want to take the chance. He's got one kidney. He's got enough issues, right? We don't need to bring that on. Yeah. So I would do this just a couple times a week and I would either like pour a little in a smoothie or mix it with, we can pick up some like 100% apple juice, maybe mix it with that. Cause I'm sure it's going to taste like shit by itself. But, um, so grab that and then we'll run to the store and get some other stuff. So. We are back. We have everything we need except for the chia seeds. I'm going to grab a smaller bag of those from TJ Maxx because all they had was like a big two pound bag that was like $10 at Walmart. Um, so anyway, we have everything else and I have a plan for a few things that I'm going to make just so they'll have some stuff for the week. So I'm doing a black bean and sweet potato chili. I'm doing a white bean and kale pot pie. And then 
I am doing a lentil vegetable soup. And that way, since they're home all day, every day, you know, they're retired, so they don't go to work and take lunches with them. That'll keep them settled for the week. And then we have a few like little snack things. I'm going to make some kale chips. So basically you just take kale and throw it in an air fryer. It's pretty quick and simple. I'm going to make some cornbread to go with the black bean chili and then stuff to make some mango green smoothies. So the main things that you want to think about whenever we're talking heart health, you want low sodium, you want no added sugar, and you want very low fat. So those are going to be the three primary things and along with the low fat kind of just naturally with that is going to be cholesterol because anything that has cholesterol in it is going to be high in fat. So you want to think swapping out meats for beans and you want to have as many fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains as you can get. So we're going to go ahead and get started on making some of these dishes. So I am only going to use my phone to record this because there's just not a really good place to set up like my tripod for the big camera that can actually see what I'm doing over here. So bear with me, but we're going to get this going. All right, we're going to start with the cornbread and get that one going in the oven. And then from there, I will do the chili. And it was at this point that my microphone died and I had no idea. So I'm going to have to use voiceover and text where I can as I go through this. But for now, we are working on the cornbread, which I am making with whole wheat flour and cornmeal and then I use applesauce in place of oil and then I use the relevant number of stevia packets instead of sugar. For the salt, it calls for a teaspoon. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use basically just a pinch, just enough for it to do what it needs to do and make it good. But we definitely don't want to make this high sodium. Canola oil, a third of a cup, which we are going to use applesauce instead. All right, so instead of using oil to spray the pan, I'm going to tear off some parchment paper and put in it. That way you don't have to worry about everything sticking to the pan really bad, but um, you still don't have to have oil. We have a cornbread that has no eggs, no oil, no dairy, and no added sugar. We use stevia instead of sugar to sweeten it. You could also use maple syrup if you do use that option. I would decrease some of the uh, milk just because you'll end up with it a little wetter because obviously maple syrup is wet and stevia is not. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven and then I'm probably going to move on to the pot pie next since it also has to bake. It's going to be a more time consuming one and then I can just throw all the chili stuff in the pot and they can, you know, let that cook down and simmer while Michael and I move on because we have dinner plans tonight as well. So. Alright, moving on, we're going to do a um, white bean and kale pot pie, and I need to make the pie crust because I usually, for me, will use the store-bought ones, um, but I want to make sure that I'm using a whole wheat, and then I want to make sure that it's not high sodium, because anytime you buy something prepackaged in the store, it's going to have a lot of sodium, so that's something that we want to be careful with, and that's what, if you're doing like a healthy plant-based diet, there's kind of a difference between just being whole food plant-based, and then also being whole food plant-based low sodium, so um, when you've had a cardiac event like that, it's extremely important to make sure that your salt content is as low as it can possibly be. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that together. And this is not something that I'm experienced with, so wish me luck. So one thing I will say, this recipe says part of it should be almond flour and part of it should be whole wheat. But I am going to use all whole wheat because almonds are a nut and nuts are high in fat. So if you are on a heart healthy diet, you really do need to avoid nuts. 
seeds, especially chia, flax, and hemp, because they're high in omega threes, are fine. Um, but I would avoid the nuts with one exception to that. I do recommend eating, if you're a woman, one Brazil nut. If you're a man, two Brazil nuts per day for the selenium, because that is also something that your heart needs, and Brazil nuts are the best source of selenium. But that would be it. Like you can't, you actually can't eat like a whole handful of Brazil nuts because you can get selenium toxicity if you have too much. So even if you're not a heart healthy person or you're not worried about like a heart specific diet, only eat one or two Brazil nuts per day. Set this aside, and I'm going to work on the filling now. And so I have these recipes on my Pinterest board, which I will link down below for you. Um, it is a heart healthy board. I have some notes on there, but unfortunately, I think the notes are only visible to me. So let me just kind of preface this by saying that the notes on any of these recipes are basically going to be if there's salt in them, omit it or reduce it. Um, if there's eggs, replace it with a flax egg, depending on what the recipe is. Um, which a flax egg is you mix a tablespoon of ground flax with two tablespoons of water and let it sit for like 20 minutes and let it basically form a gel. And then, um, what was the other one? Oh yeah, so oil. If there's any oil in it, replace it with applesauce. Or if it's something like savory, you can just use like vegetable broth in place of it. So those would pretty much be my notes if you can't see them. If you're wondering why these are black beans instead of white, it's because I completely forgot to put white beans on my shopping list, so I did not buy them from the store, and I ended up setting black beans instead. So I have it ready to go in. I still gotta throw the top crust on. The one thing I am gonna say about the crust, so I have it saved, but what I would do from what I'm seeing, I can't remember exactly how much flour. I believe it was a cup and a half of one plus three quarters of another. So it'd be two and a quarter cups of flour. I would do more than that because I can tell by looking at this, when I divided it into two crusts, it, the bottom one did not fully fill the pie plate and then the top one will probably just cover it. So I would say add another half cup of flour to that and then obviously more almond milk to bring it together. And if I do this again, that is definitely what I'm gonna do because this just didn't quite make enough. So, baker's tip. Anyway, I'm gonna toss that on here and get it in the oven.
that doesn't even fully cover it. I mean, it's enough that you're gonna get the, the crust that you want. It's just not gonna look <laughs> the way you want it. But there it is, we're ready to stick it in. today I still have to do the chili in the soup but I'm going to come back tomorrow um, I have to go pick up Logan and I've got to come this way anyway so I'm just going to come a couple hours early and get those made tomorrow and I will um, hop on and do that on here as well and um, right now I'm gonna do a quick tidy up here and then Michael and I have to get going so we can meet his dad and stepmom for dinner so I will catch back up with you maybe tonight but probably tomorrow I am en route to my mom and stepdad's house to finish up the cooking from yesterday. Um, I stopped by TJ Maxx first. I needed to pick up some chia seeds and some tahini, and now I am on my way. So we are going to do two soups. Well, one's basically a chili. They're both basically soups, but um, so it's a black bean and sweet potato chili, and then I'm doing just a basic lentil vegetable soup because it's something that's really, really easy to throw together in a pinch, um, and usually... If you have like dried beans around, um, like if you keep frozen vegetables in the freezer, um, and like I personally always have vegetable broth around. So for me, these are things that are kind of like fridge and pantry staples that I always have that we can make the soup out of. So I want to show them that. Um, but those are the two things that I'm going to do on here. And then also my stepdad has a huge sweet tooth. And so one of the challenges is coming up with healthy baked goods. And so I am going to make some it's basically zucchini bread, like a chocolate zucchini bread, but it's going to be in uh, muffin form. And so we're going to do that without using any oil, without using any dairy, and without using any eggs. So I will have that on here as well. And then that is going to wrap out the uh, food part of this vlog because, you know, normally I might make one dish on a vlog, but for this one I'm doing multiple. And it's just because I need to get them kind of set up with something for the week and start teaching what they need to eat, what they need to look for. Um, my mom, you know, she's not used to cooking whole food plant-based. So like kind of helping her learn new methods of cooking and preparing food. So that's really what I'm trying to do right now. And I will be doing this for the foreseeable um, until they kind of get the hang of things. But also I had assigned them kind of some homework for last night. There was a video that I wanted them to watch, which I will also link below for anyone who's interested. Um, so it is, it's actually on YouTube, but it is a talk that Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn gave. And Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, I believe he is retired now, but he worked at Cleveland Clinic for like, I think pretty much the vast majority of his career. And Cleveland Clinic, if you've had any kind of heart issues, like that is the place that you want to be. And it's fantastic. Um, and that is where he practiced. And um, so that for someone who's had a heart attack or has any kind of heart issues, um, it's a great video to watch. There's so much information. He delivers so much more and so much more detail than I feel like I could. Um, so I assigned them to watch that and then we're gonna kind of pick up and go from there. And if they haven't seen it yet, I'm gonna make sure that they watch that today. Um, but if you're interested, I definitely recommend it and I will have it linked below for you. But that is it for me for now. I don't wanna get too chatty because I know I still have a lot of filming to do just for food stuff. Um, but, and I'm also going to turn off this microphone so it doesn't die on me like it did yesterday. And that way the video quality or the audio quality of the rest of this video isn't going to suck like the first part of it did. So I'm going to wrap it up and I will see you when I get there. Hi, I am back. Everybody else is doing their homework and watching the video. And I'm going to get started on some, um, chocolate zucchini bread. So he has a sweet and when I get this in the oven, then I'm going to move on to like the stew and the soup. Um, or the chili in the soup, sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this first and I need to get the zucchini shredded. I've already put together a flax egg, which is again, a tablespoon of flax, two tablespoons of water. So it's sitting here gelling and it'll be ready to go whenever I get the rest done. So let's get started on the zucchini.
All right, so I only need a cup of shredded zucchini, so I've got plenty left over. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this because I'm also making a lentil vegetable soup, and this can go into that. So I have the zucchini bread in the oven. So I'm gonna get started on the black bean chili. And I don't have a recipe for this, um, to be honest. I think I might have saved something on my board that was um, close enough, but this is really just something I'm kind of pulling out of my butt and making. But it is going to be black beans, sweet potatoes, tomatoes. I'm gonna to throw some, well, I guess the zucchini I'll probably put in the uh, vegetable soup. But anyway, you'll see because I will show you as I go. Um, and then the usual chili seasoning, so like ground cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, that kind of stuff. So we'll get it going. All right, I have the chili cooking and I'm gonna leave that one going um, until the sweet potatoes are cooked through and then it will be ready to eat. And then I'm gonna move on and do the soup. And so the soup, this is the one I was talking about earlier that is kind of a, you can throw stuff you have in the pantry and the freezer in it and make it. And it's gonna be a completely balanced meal. So I'm doing quinoa for a whole grain. I'm doing lentils for your protein. And then it's just gonna have vegetables and then like um, a tomato, diced tomatoes and vegetable broth as your broth for the soup. So gonna go ahead and whip that up as well. We're gonna do kind of a smaller batch of that um, just because making so much stuff at once and room in the refrigerator. So um, I don't really have a recipe for that one either. So I guess just watch and you'll learn how to do it. All right, so the first step, I'm gonna do the lentils. I'm gonna get those going. The best way to do lentils is you wanna just boil them in water until they're soft because if you put them in anything that has salt, it kind of inhibits the cooking process. and I feel like they just never quite get all the way done. So I'm gonna get those going first and get those cooked. And then when those are done, we're gonna throw in all the rest of the stuff. Lentils are 
cook, so I'm ready to move on and put the soup together. And it's going to be pretty simple. The only real prep work I have to do, we ran out of onions, otherwise I would start with that. But um, I'm going to peel and chop a couple of small potatoes, and the rest of it is just pouring in broth. I've got a bag of frozen vegetables. We're going to, since I'm doing a small batch, we're probably going to use about a half the bag in there. And then some, I'm going to open a can of um, no salt added diced tomatoes. And that's really going to be it. So there's not a whole lot of prep work for this, thankfully. So it's pretty quick and easy to do. All right, since I don't have any onions to cook, I'm just going to go ahead and start tossing in broth and veggies. And I do also have the zucchini that I had chopped up earlier. And there's, since I'm making a small batch of soup, there's probably more here than I need. So I'm going to go ahead and just use half of this and also half of the lentils. And that way, when this batch is done, if they want to make more, they can just toss that in. So I have everything in and I'm just going to let it, I'm going to bring it to a boil first and I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. And then um, once the potatoes and zucchini are cooked through, I'm going to toss in some quinoa for the grain. It doesn't take very long, just a few minutes cooking and it will, um, so with quinoa, if you've never cooked with it before, when it's done, it like kind of pops and you'll see like a little bit of a halo around it. And it only takes a few minutes to get to that point. So I'm going to toss it in at the end and then it'll be ready to serve. Yeah. All right, those quinoa are so tiny that you probably couldn't see that, but they are done. They've got the little halos around them now, so um, everything's cooked and it's ready to just sit, cool, and then be ready to be stored and put in the fridge. I am ready to close out this vlog. I just wanted to hop on here real quick because I thought about something just a little bit ago. I completely spaced and forgot to throw the collard greens into the black bean and sweet potato chili. And then I forgot about putting kale into the soup. And so this is one of the things for someone who's had some sort of a cardiac event. Um, you want to make sure you get plenty of greens for the nitric oxide content that is in them. Um, that helps your endothelial cell or your endothelial lining in your vessels to be able to dilate and expand. And it, it's super important for anyone who's had a cardiac event. So any opportunity you have to throw greens into something, do it. Have them at every meal of the day. Um, it's going to be super helpful. But I wanted to hop on here and make sure I included that since I forgot to do it while I was cooking the meals. And then also for the next video that will be out on Sunday, I plan on going up and spending an entire day without having any other plans <laughs> where I can actually sit down with mom, where she can take notes. Um, I can go over specific nutritional requirements, um, supplements, how much of what kinds of food need to be eaten, um, some of those kinds of specifics, and then help give her some links and um, just some resources uh, in order to be able to continue this long term. So I will also film that, that way I will be able to share that stuff with you guys as well but that's going to be it for this one i know it was very cooking centric but i hope that it was helpful and if you're interested in learning more about the nutrition side of things then stay tuned and i will see you back here in a few days